Hi, and welcome to Thursday Thoughts, friends. I am Pastor Alex Bruning of First United Methodist Church in Jessup, Iowa, and this is my best friend who has come to join us this week, Jordy. Uh, Jordy is a music education teacher um, for pre-K or K? Pre-K. Pre-K through fifth grade. She um, is also the education chair at her um, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America in um, Preston, Iowa. Uh, and she has um, been heading up their Wednesday evening program, music there and having the kids sing and worship uh, as well the last couple of years. Um, she has uh, three wonderful nieces. Um, who are pretty adorable bull, and um, she's getting to do um, lots of watching them while um, their essential worker parents are working right now. Uh, so welcome, Jordy. Uh, Thank I, you. Did Thank I cover you. everything? I think you got it all, yeah. That's, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Yeah, oh, adorable <laughs> puppy and kitty. I didn't mention that. Oh either. yeah, I don't know if you can see the dog. You, you, there you go. Yeah. And uh, the cat's like right underneath his knee. So, so. Also and, napping. I mean, you know, as you do. And they have the best relationship ever. Like they they do. They are cuddle buddies and even my vet says they have the cleanest ears he's ever seen because they clean each other's ears weirdly. Yeah. Like even I was like, it must be weird because even my vet was like, Really? They do? <laughs> like, they like each other. What can I say? Like yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and and Felix is almost as big as Baxter. I mean, That's true. Yeah, he and getting bigger. He was like a half a pound heavier the last time I took him to the vet. So I'm like, oh, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> I need to dial it back a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, he's just sitting at home now too. So. Well, yeah, like he wasn't before. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know what they do when you're gone. You know, there are days that I'm like. I wonder if I should put up a camera. Like, I just need to know, you know, because Baxter's like, he has a baby gate up. He's in the bathroom during the day. So he's got his puppy bed in there and his toys and his water bowl. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, and then Felix just roams the house. So God only knows. <laughs> I'm always curious. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Especially when I'm gone for eight hours and Nookie's laying in the exact same place I left him. Right? Did he just go back there or has he seriously not moved in eight hours? No, normally Felix meets me at the door, like, and then he's, he's weird because he likes to like leap at you, like he's so excited to see you, so he jumps up on a, on a shelf, and then I'm like, hold on, hold on, I'm trying to like put down all my stuff, and then I go, okay, and he leaps at me, and we have to like hug when I come through the door. Have you ever, have you ever read the Hannah Swenson books, um, by Joanne Fluke? Do you know those at all? So they're, they're a murder mystery book with recipes in them. She owns a, a cookie shop. Hi, baby. I think that you told me about this one before. See, here so, he is, the leaping cat, the leaping well, wonder. She has a cat um, that's a, quite a large cat, Moisha. And before she opens her door, she has to set everything down and like brace herself because as soon as she opens the door, the cat leaps out the door into her arms. That's what that just made me think of. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's, that's him. Yeah. You're living it in real life here just a character in a book what can I say and you make really good cookies too so you know. I do make good cookies yeah <laughs> well so um this is just you know a normal conversation for us but I actually invited Jordy on here um to talk about um a book by Jen Hatmaker uh so Jen Hatmaker um is an author um she's wrote um several New York Times bestsellers. Um, her most recent book that just, came, oh yeah, there you go. So Fierce, Free, and Fire is her most recent book that just came out um, that I'm gonna borrow as soon as Jordy's done with it. She's, yep. she's all that, but I'm, I'm going. Order. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, she's married um, to a pastor. Um, they founded a church um, in Austin, Texas a while back. Um, they have five kids. Uh, I think uh, two are still at home or three still at home. Um, well, right now they're all at home. <laughs> right now, all five of them. Yeah, <laughs> but I think she's three in college yes. and two are in high school. 
Yeah, junior high or high school. Or the other way around. Two in high school, two in college and, and yeah. in high school. But they're they're growing up. Um, <laughs> Whatever, yeah. They're in that area. Yeah. So um and she wrote a book um a while back called Seven, an Experimental Mutiny Against Excess. Um so Ooh, how many years ago has it been now that Brian and I did that? It wasn't last year, the year before, two years ago during Lent. Um, Brian and I did um, seven, um, which was an experiment that Jen did in her own life, um, trying to look at the stuff that she just had too much of to downsize, um, to have less of her and her stuff um, and open up more space for God and God's people. Um, so uh let's i think that let's name the seven things let's let's start with that so the the seven areas are food clothing spending media possessions waste and stress Did i get them all you got them all all right awesome i, I was cheating i was looking at the book <laughs> to make sure that yep. okay yeah. um so jordy why don't you tell us um you you've looked at this more recently you've done this kind of more recently um what what drew your attention to seven um well well you introduced introduced me to jen hatmaker several years ago now and since then i've been uh, an avid listener of her podcast i always keep up on all of her stuff for, for the, the love, love. <laughs> on any of your uh, podcast platforms you can find it it's really great she has a wide variety of guests she does kind of like mini series within, so she'll do like, you know, seven to 10 episodes on one topic and then she'll completely switch gears. And sometimes they're really like, you know, like one was like for the love of um, faith leaders. And then the next one was like for the love of music. And she just had like on a bunch of musicians and things. So it, it's, you know, a good balance of lighthearted and also like really important topics. Well, and one of the things I'll say about her podcast that I love is that she has people on there that she doesn't necessarily agree with 100%. Um, so yeah, she has people that she is on board with fully, that she loves. She has some really close friends on there who share things, but she also has people on there who maybe she doesn't see eye to eye with, but they still offer us this great conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really enjoy listening to that. And then I mean, I've also read, I read the book for the love and I've read seven. Um, those are the two that I've read by her. And so I kind of, you know, uh, watched you and Brian or, you know, heard about from you and Brian as you went through your seven experience. So I guess uh, it was one of those things that had just been kind of on my mind. And I think I visited you what, around Christmas time. And I just yeah. said, I think I'm going to do this. And you're like, here, take this home with you and go. And so I did. And then uh, I am the education chair at my church. So we are looking at some options for adult education. And so myself and um, about five other women in my church decided to do it as a Lenten study. So we did it much more condensed. Um, and then it kind of got, you know, derailed by COVID. <laughs> but, um, you know, we got started on it. And I think it was a, a good experience just to like, think about how many how many things that I use or how many things that I have that I'm not using as far as like possessions or the amount of TV that I actually watch is astronomical. Like that was a hard week. <laughs> <laughs> so so the the premise is that in these seven areas of excess um, for one week, um, Brian and I chose to do two weeks, but for one week, Jen suggests um, for one week, you give up something in that realm. So she offers you what she did. Um, and she did it for a whole month. Every one of these things she did for a whole month. So this was uh, a year long process for her. Um, so for food, for example, she only ate seven foods for a month. Um, so she ate chicken, avocados, spinach, sweet potatoes, apples, bread, and eggs. Those are the seven things she ate for a month, any combination of those. Um, and part of it is about putting less time and energy into making decisions, um, less time and energy into grocery shopping. So uh, 
when I grocery shop, I usually have to go to more than one store. Um, just with Brian and I's kind of different diets, some dairy free stuff you can't get everywhere. Um, and so I spent so much time grocery shopping, going to different stores. When we were doing seven, I walked in the store, I threw two bags of apples, two loaves of bread, two bags of spinach. I mean, it was the quickest grocery shopping I have uh-huh. ever done in my life. Um, and so there was a lot, I had a lot more excess time to focus my energy elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I didn't do the strict, cause like within her study book, she also gave the suggestions of like other ways mm-hmm. that you could participate mm-hmm. rather than doing the seven food items. And she did that for each of the week, different alternatives. Yeah. Um, and so I did like a fruit and veggie diet. So I had fruits, vegetables, and I, I did do like oatmeal in the morning, just so I like had some grain in my but that was the only grain that I had was oatmeal in the morning for breakfast and I had one cup of coffee <laughs> it grows in a plant <laughs> it's a plant right so I was like I get one cup that's it but yeah so I did that side of it and the same though really like it was like all right well I need fruits and vegetables this week all right here we go grab a couple of item or a couple of uh uh, options just to keep it, you know, whatever. And I had a couple of meals planned. So that way I uh, wasn't bored of just like eating like a salad every day or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was really easy grocery shopping, first of all. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was cheaper I, you know, too for me. I don't know if it was for, for you with the fruits and veggies. Well, yes, still though, because I didn't, I didn't like browse. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, oh, you want all of the aisles and be like, hmm, what else do I need while I'm here? And I just do that. You know, I just went in, I was like, I need this, 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 whatever. And I got out. Well, and we didn't snack either. Um, yeah. And so that cut a whole, you know, section out of our grocery bill too. Um, well, and I did snack, but my snacks were like celery and strawberries. So. Well, we didn't drink either. And, and that, oh, that, that's a big, you know, that's a yeah. big cost item sometimes. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Depending on the week. Well, and during quarantine, especially. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so why, um, you said media was, was a hard week for you. You want to talk about what you did for media? So I went full bore for media. I did no social media. I did no TV. Um, I did listen to podcasts and I um, listened to music like on Spotify, but I didn't do any TV, Netflix, streaming. Uh, Like I said, all social media was turned off. Snapchat was the hardest. I used that one a lot. Um, And I lost all of my snap streaks too. I didn't think about that in advance. Like all these, oh, I shouldn't worry about that. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think I Jen like, would oh. say that's, you know, kind of the point of this. Let's see what's really important, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Apparently snap streaks are important in my, my life. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, and I honestly, it kind of like unintentionally landed on a, a really good week to, to do it, I suppose, because I had lots to do that week. Like it was conference week at school. Um, and we were just, you know, so we were busy doing things. It had been obviously like Ash Wednesday. So there was, there was a lot going on. Um, so I didn't have a ton of downtime to like sit at home and twiddle my thumbs. Like, well, no, what do I do? <laughs> you know? Um, but I definitely, like I picked up a book, like, and I, I've always loved to read, but it seems like in more recent years, it's easier to turn on the TV, you know? And so I haven't read nearly as much. And I, I mean, I had a book that I had been reading for like six months that I hadn't finished yet. So I opened it up and I like made it through like halfway through the book in that week, just because I wasn't watching the television. So that was like a little blessing, I suppose, to kind of uh, rekindle a passion that I had lost. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, um, so so one of the things Jen talks about in the book is how rich we actually are as mm-hmm. um, people in the United States in general, but especially as middle class um, mm-hmm. people in the U.S. Uh, we are actually um, in the top 
five percent in the world. I was going to say there's a statistic in the book. I'm going to look it up. No, top four percent. If you make thirty five thousand dollars a year in the top four four percent. Yeah, in the world. So we are we are seriously rich. Um, one of my favorite um, quotes in the book is when this little boy who's been displaced um, by a hurricane, <laughs> um, who is coming to stay with her family, they're they're taking in um, people who were displaced by the hurricane, um, walks into their house and says to his his dad, "Dad, this white guy is rich," <laughs> um, and. And Jen is like, I've never thought of us as rich. Like my, yeah. my kids have never been on an airplane. Like we don't really take extravagant vacations. Like we're not rich, but the truth is we really are. Um, and yeah. the reason we don't think we're rich is because we're comparing ourselves constantly with those who are above us um, in, the, in the economic ladder. Um, and when we stop to really look at the world as a whole, we are like that top rung of the ladder. Um, and so part of this was to, to open her eyes even further to, um, economic disparity and, and her call as a Christian, um, to address economic disparity, um, not only, um, in a larger, um, systematic way, but also as an individual person, what did she and, and her family need to do? Um, and one of the things that they came to is that they do not spend more on themselves than they do on others. So they automatically cut their income in half and half of it goes to helping others and half of it is what they have to live on. Um, so, you, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself. We tithe, <laughs> I give, you know, I, I, we always give 10% of our income, um, to God. And, and Jen says for her and her family, that wasn't enough, um, and this is her way of seeing, where did I have all this excess that I need to get rid of um, so that I can help others and so that I can, can grow closer uh, to God as well? Um, I don't know. Did you feel like the seven experience helped you grow closer to God or others? Um, I, I mean, like I struggle with some weeks, like definitely the, I connected particularly with like the, the, we, we uh, lumped a couple of them together to fit them into our Lenten season. So we did food and waste together. And for whatever reason that week was particularly um, fulfilling for me, I guess. And like I said, when I started, I was like, I thought food would be the hardest to connect. Um, just because I'm like, it's so easy to get sidetracked by why am I really, am I doing it because, or, you know, like what, what's the point of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Words are hard. Uh, like what's the point of restricting yourself basically? And right. are you, are you doing it for the right reason or are you doing it like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll lose some weight off this or, you know what I mean? Like, it's so easy. That was one that I was like, okay. And, and so many years of like hearing people, I gave this up for Lent and it's usually like, I gave up chocolate for Lent and I'm like, okay, how did giving up chocolate bring you closer to God? You know, um, did you do it because you really wanted to uh, enrich your faith or did you just do it because somebody told you that you're supposed to give something up for Lent? Um, so, but in the end, I guess, keeping it in perspective and the idea of um, kind of Jesus gave for us, now I give for him kind of thing, I guess, was fulfilling. Um, and then also like, because we lumped waste in with that too. Um, she talks a lot in her book during that chapter about being stewards to God's land. Yes, um, yes. And to God's creation. Um, and that just really, I don't know, just the way that she talked about that just really resonated with me a lot, especially with the, um, disagreements in politics about climate change and and is it real is it not i don't know 90 some percent of scientists say it is but you know those two percent let's just you know sorry <laughs> i won't go there right now you know, regardless this was a, a lens to look through that without bringing the politics into it um and instead of saying well this is i'm doing it because of these politics i'm doing it because I am a steward to God's creation. Yes. Um, and this is uh, a way for me to serve 
God and to serve God's creation in this by taking care of it and doing my best to reduce, reuse, recycle. That's kind of how I felt like, yeah. Well, and I definitely think Jen would, um, it, in reading what Jen has written, um, Jen was at a place where she's like, yeah, right. Um, I don't need to recycle. I don't need to do any of this. Like, right. Um, yeah. And she had this huge, I mean, that chapter is an awakening. Yeah. She went, for Jen. Yeah, she went from a totally different, she recycled nothing. She just put it all in the trash to going to other people's trash cans and stealing <laughs> out stealing out the recyclable bits and taking them home to her recycling bin. Yes. yes. <gasps> that is my husband, my by the way. <laughs> that is my husband. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> um, but so um, I want to talk, a, a, I want to talk a little bit about fasting because, because you brought up something really interesting just a second ago, you know, what is the point of this? Why are we really doing this? Yeah. And I think we got that question a lot, especially when we were doing food and we're like, we're only eating these seven foods and people were like, well, that's stupid. Um, you know, what, what's the, what's the point in that? So, um, Jen yeah. talks in her book about, um, the point of a fast is to summon God's movement in your life. So the goal of a fast is to create space in your life for God to move and to show you things. So she says that, um, fasting, um, we fast during times of mourning in order to, to best hear God. We fast during times of inquiry when we're trying to figure out the way. Um, we fast for repentance. Um, and I think in that chapter in particular on waste, I think that fast was a, a lot of repentance for Jen, um, for having not cared for the earth for so long. Um, we fast in preparation um, for something. So the way I think of that is, um, kind of when you fast for, uh, blood work, you're fasting to prepare yourself for what comes next. Um, so fasting, um, is a way to connect yourself with God. Um, and that connection with God prepares you for what comes next. Um, we fast in crisis and we fast as a form of worship. Um, so thinking of those, those six areas of fasting, um, I think Brian and I were really fasting in preparation when we took on seven. Um, we were um, about to um, adopt. Uh, we had, we were going through that process at this point in time. Um, we had just sent in our um, initial adoption application um, and we're signing up for classes and, and all of that. So for us, this was a way to prepare our hearts and our minds and our homes um, to welcome in children. It was, it was a big part of preparation. We, um, we had no idea what we were doing. We wanted to be prepared. We wanted God to move in our hearts and our lives to prepare us for, for what would come um, to the best that you can <laughs> be prepared for that. Um, and so for us, we definitely took this on a lot as, as preparation. Um, do any of those, those six kind of resonate with you? The, the morning uh, inquiry, repentance, preparation, crisis, or worship? Um, I suppose, like, I guess the word that came to mind for me when you were saying the reasons, I, the word that comes to mind for me is renewal. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, just trying to find some new perspective to look through or new lens to look through. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Just renewal. Yeah. I really like that word. And yeah. Yeah, that should be on Jen's list too. We should um, tell her to add Let that to it. <laughs> yeah, because you know I talk about her like she's my best friend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we all do, right? Yeah, we, for real. <gasps> yeah, um, and I think uh, one of the other things I love about Seven um, is that uh, if you if you buy, so if you. I, when we bought it, we bought the study book. Um, and the study, the study book is, it's deep. Like, um, I can't tell you, you know, Brian and I, yeah. This is the book. <laughs> so. And, and I don't know, did you sit down and like do one of those full through without stopping at all? 
Uh, we didn't as a group. I used it more as a guide to lead our groups and just kind of picked out because we had really limited time together as a group. And so I just kind of picked out some different um, key ideas that we could um, talk about as a group more than anything. Well, but, and and I would say Brian and I, we sat down to try and do those studies together and we would have like an hour time block at first and we would get like not even halfway through that. I mean, yeah. Uh, it, it is a, it is a lot and it's so in depth. Um, but it, it really makes you think like, um, I, I like to think I'm a deep thinker, a lot of thinks in one sentence. Um, but I mean, I've, I've been trained to be a deep thinker. That's, that's, you know, I have a, I have a philosophy degree. Um, (laughs) I use it a lot. Let me tell you. Um, but I, in doing that study, I would be like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of it this way. Or, wow, I, I never would have gone to that scripture. She uses so many scriptures in there and not just like individual verses. Jen is pulling out entire chapters of scripture. She is giving you context with these scriptures. Um, she's not proof texting. I mean, um, in any way, I don't think I, she gives you background information. This is what was happening during this time. This is what was going on. And um, so I loved that it had a study guide that came with it. But I also loved that the book itself is very raw. Um, Jen uh, wrote it as a journal um, as she was partaking in her own seven experiment. So, um, and all of her writing, I think, is very raw. She, she's going to tell you the truth. And she's going to do it in a way that convicts you, yet at the same time, you're laughing and crying and um, you're right there with her wanting to strangle her husband um, when he texts her about what a tortilla is. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So um, is a tortilla bread or not? That is a big debate in the hat maker household. Um, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then make, her, uh, make sure that she uh, writes it into her journal when uh, she was like in an airport or something. Yes. <laughs> and she, so she ate a tortilla. She ate a tortilla. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so biggest, what would you say your biggest takeaway from this, this seven experiment was or is? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that my biggest takeaway is just how much that I take for granted, like the, the amount of things and that I actually have um, and the amount of food that's in my house for one person. And, you know, and just little things like that, that I'm like, you know, you walk to the fridge and you will open it and oh, I have nothing to eat. I have a full refrigerator, full cupboards, and there are people who are living on a half a cup of rice a day, you know. If that, yeah. You know, and that was very eye-opening. That percentage, the 4% thing, I had no concept of that prior to this book. And so that was a big eye-opener too. Um, Yeah, but just in general, thinking about my closet, the how many articles of clothing that I have, I will not disclose that number, but I do know what it is now. <laughs> I gave up counting. <laughs> My number got too high. I stopped counting. I think the only things I did not count were socks and underwear. That's uh, okay. And okay. yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> I got rid of a significant amount of items, and I still have a full closet. Let's put it that way. Um. So. It, yeah, I guess it's just got me moving. It, it has me moving in a direction of wanting to be more like that on a daily basis. Maybe not in that mm. same extreme of wearing the same seven articles of clothing, which, by the way, was really easy because that week was the week that we went on quarantine. So I wore the same outfit for like two weeks. <laughs> but TMI? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, <laughs> But, you know, just the, I, the whole concept of living in with what we need, not living up to all of the, uh, the keeping up with the Joneses yeah. and um, being, being more savvy to the advertisements that try to entice us to get more and more and more and more. 
or um, yeah, so I guess I'm just a lot more thoughtful with my purchases and things like that in that arena. Well, and I know, I know you were already really big into this, but two years ago, I wasn't so much when we did this, um, but generally focuses too on ethical purchases. Where is she getting her clothes yeah. from? Um, and, and really looks at, at the chain of, of purchase as yeah. well. So, you know, who is making your things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love that. I mean, it, it, you definitely, when you look at, I mean, even like on Facebook is constantly obviously giving me ads. And so if you go, you go to any one pages, you know, right away, if they are ethical or not, because if they are, they usually have a really long story about it. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I would, I will tell you the majority of ads on Facebook are not ethical purchases. Um, and Except packed apparel because I buy from them. So now they show up on my Facebook feed all the time. But <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the thing I will say too is, um, you know, so many of us think it's so hard to, to buy ethical. Um, and the truth is it takes some work and some re research. Um, and it does cost more money. Um, it, it is more expensive because you're paying a living wage with your purchase. But Jen yeah. um, offers resources within seven um, to find ethical clothing in particular. I also yeah. love her for the love podcast. Every Christmas does an ethical gift yes. guide. And Brandon um, usually does that one with it. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. They do that one together. And I will tell you this year, um, we bought Brian's dad and brother beef jerky off of their ethical gift guide. And mm -hmm. we bought, uh, coffee or tea off their ethical gift guide this year. Um, and so, I mean, they're, they're great products that you're probably going to buy for people anyway, you know, um, or you're going to buy for yourself anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me. That's me. Um, so why not, you know, buy it ethically, um, and support a living yeah. wage at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in that way, you're also, um, a lot of the items that I have found are made in the United States. Um, so you're supporting you know, American made items in a lot, a lot of ways. Um, there are some that are maybe not made in the United States, but it's like an artisan kind of style that, yeah. which is also really cool. Cause then you usually have like a story behind it too. A lot of like, I have one product that I got, it actually like had like a that like, hi, I'm the person who made yes. this. Yes. Uh, I think it was, um, and like had a picture of her and I've been working for this company for this many years. Mm -hmm. um, this is my story. A lot of them are like a refugee type of situation. And so, uh, I don't know. And it, it makes me feel better about spending my money on something that I know is doing good in the world. I, I agree entirely. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think seven raised a lot more, um, awareness about my purchases for me. Um, and I would say I definitely need to do seven again <laughs> um, because I, my purchases have gotten a little um, out of hand lately. Um, I hear you. All of this time <laughs> on our hands to online shop. It's a problem. It's such a problem. Um, <laughs> and, and my closet is over overflowing um, with stuff again, um, even after having, I mean, we purged I call it the purge um, because yeah. we did like during um, material during uh, possessions. That's how she words it. Possessions. Yeah. Um, Brian and I each for two weeks got rid of a minimum of seven items a day in our household, not necessarily clothing. Um, yeah. But, so, you know, seven times seven is 49. So a hundred, at least a hundred items each. Um, and we didn't, we only did one day of clothing. We could only count clothing for one day. Granted, we got rid of way more than a hundred, than seven items each. Yeah. Um, but we just had that much stuff, um, mm -hmm. that we never used, um, that we didn't need. And we, we took that and we sold it at a garage sale. And then we gave the money to Dress Ember, which is, is kind of my, my oh. favorite organization that fights human trafficking. Um, and so, and that is something, you know, Jen encourages like, do clothing swaps, you know, um, don't, don't go buy new, see what you can trade. And, um, she also, though she would say, 
Um, don't, don't sell your stuff, go take it to somebody who really needs it and form a relationship with them. Don't just drop it at the Goodwill, go take it to a, 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 a homeless shelter and, and, and stay and hang out and, and meet people and, and build relationships. Um, that, that's what Jen would really say. Her story about the purse. Oh, yes. Yes. You remember that one? She went, they have like a tradition at their church. Um, every Easter that they go out and they worship with the homeless in their area. And she had all of these purses that she had are already planned to purge that she just took with her to this event. And she has, and because she knows that the homeless people around there, they love to have purses to carry their things in. Um, and there was this one little tiny purse that she's like, mm, I'm not sure that, you know, they might not be able to, but you know, she just had this little, like, I don't know, inkling. So she took this little tiny purse along with her and lo and behold, when she was there, there's a little girl there and uh, she gave the little girl the purse and it was, you know, just a magical experience for her. And, you know, those kinds of relationships from something as simple as a purse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing that Jen does at the very end of this, so she has an introductory chapter and she has a wrap up chapter. Um, and in the wrap up chapter, she says, okay, commit to something for a year. Um, what are you going to commit to for the next year? Uh, did you, did you all do that? Or you probably didn't get there. No, right? we didn't really get to that because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you were, if you were going to do that, if you were going to take yeah. one thing away from this book and commit to it for the next year, what would it be for you? Oh, gosh, that's hard. Um, I think it would probably be in the arena of possessions, um, you know, because it always seems like when I, you know, I am a purger anyway, like I, you know, every spring, every fall, I go through my closet and I get rid of things and I never have any fewer clothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I guess that I hope if there's a takeaway from this is that I'm not just that I'm more thoughtful in why I'm buying something and if I actually need it. Um, so that way, as I'm purging items that, you know, I'm not actually, you know, uh, I don't know, taking it back to, you know, equaling it out. I'm, but let actually lessening what I'm, what I own as far as, you know, and what I need. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I did. That was very much just stream of thought coming out of the brain right there. Well, and, and for Brian and I, I, I can't remember mine, which is terrible. Um, but Brian's was to not buy any fishing lures for a year. Um, that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> however, however, I will say, I will say he um, bought way less in that next year. And he seriously thought about every fishing lure purchase. Um, whereas, you know, before we saw it. Like, oh, sure. It's five bucks. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, you know, he really thought about, well, actually I have one that's kind of like this and, and it does the same thing. And, you know, um, and I think it really did uh, affect him there. Um, I really can't remember what, what I committed to for a year. Um, I also started composting and have continued to do that. So I'm going to try to. Are you, um, vermi composting? Are you, I you just talk? have a DIY tub outside okay. of yeah. my house <laughs> that I, uh, I found some instructions online and, uh, did what it told me to do. And I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had composted in Kansas actually, and, and we hadn't composted yes. since we moved to Iowa when we did this study. So that is something we started doing again after the study was composting again. Yeah. Um, Brian's thing now is that we're going to get a vermi composter, which is actually, you, you can keep it in your house. It's meant for small houses or apartments um, and it's worms. Oh, I read about those. They sound interesting, but yeah. I think you're like, you know, still experimental for me. So I'll start with the cheapest route and I'll work my way up to some of the more expensive ways to do this or the more intense ways to do this. Yeah. Brian has decided we are in need of a vermi composter. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I think, uh, number one, I really think I should do this study again. But yeah. I think um, if I were to commit to something today um, for the next year, 
Um, I think mine would be to, to simplify. Um, not only um, my, to simplify my clothing. Um, I, you know, I've been playing with the idea of a capsule wardrobe forever now. Uh, yeah. I just need to take the leap. I need to do a capsule wardrobe. Um, simplify my food. Like, um, <laughs> you know, we, we just have so much processed stuff. Um, even when we try not to have processed stuff, there's so much processed stuff in our house. Um, to, to simplify my food, to simplify my possessions, what do I really need? Um, and I think in simplifying all of that, um, it would really help me simplify stress as well. Um, cause stress was one I really failed so badly at. Um, I was still super stressed when I was supposed to be fasting from stress. So <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my stress one was in the middle of this when I was, you know, trying to figure out how to online teach. So <laughs> I'm sure you can tell how that went for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I purchased the book that she recommended too. Like she is, like she said, she based her, um, because she, she, uh, did the seven pauses a day. And so, and it was based on this book. Seven sacred pauses. Oh, okay. So I went ahead and purchased this. Um, and I haven't really, I don't do like all of the pauses from it, but there are very nice, um, little meditations in there and little prayers and things. So it's kind of just like when I, when I feel like I need it kind of thing, which has been nice during this time where I'm stuck at yeah. home and I'm just like, I need to step back for a minute and I just get out my little book and I say a little prayer and take a deep breath and it's just kind of nice. Awesome. I might have to look into that book. Yeah. Well, um, I, I want to, I want to thank you for, for agreeing to talk with me about this and yeah. allowing me to, to publish it on our, on our church page. Um, seven is, is the second book really to a book Jen wrote called interrupted. Um, and she wrote, um, interrupted, um, when Jesus wrecks your comfortable Christianity is, is the subtitle. I haven't read that one yet either. I mean, um, it's on my list. So I actually read that one first, which is where I found out about seven. Um, right. And I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it is um, one of the things that Jen says that I agree with entirely is that sometimes conviction feels like guilt. Um, it is a book that if you let it, it will make you feel so guilty about your life and your faith. But in reality, that isn't guilt. That's being convicted that you need to do something different, that you need to be better for yourself, for your neighbor and for God. Um, and so I would recommend first off, read Interrupted. I would re so recommend doing um, seven um, and, and really committing to I'm it. I'm going to do it again. I, I'm like, we, we kind of, like I said, we got derailed. And so I just don't feel like I really got the full experience yet. So we're definitely, I'm going to do it again. I hope that I have some people from my church join me as well. I know I haven't missed one, so. <laughs> well, and I would love to host it at First UMC Jessup. Um, if you're interested, you let me know. We'll do seven together um, anytime. I'm totally game. Um, so like I said, Jen just, just had a new um, book come out. Uh, fierce, free, and full of fire, the guide to being, to being glorious you. Um, that's her, her most recent publication. I haven't read that one. Um, 2017, she had a mess and moxie come out. I own that book. You're welcome to borrow it from me. Um, I own for the love, haven't read it. Um, but if you would like to read that I one, did know. yeah, <laughs> you read my copy. My copy's been read. Um, let me know again, her podcast for the love is a great resource. Um, following her on Facebook, um, she posts great stuff on there too. Pretty frequently. Yeah. And sometimes it's just funny stuff. Like I yeah. lock myself in a bathroom and I'm drinking wine in my bathtub to avoid my family right now. <laughs> True story. Um, or, or other times it's, it's serious, heartfelt stuff yeah. um, as well. So it's, it's a good mix. Um, but yeah, so we want to thank all of you for joining us today. Jordy, do you have any final thoughts or, or words you want to send people away with? Um, thanks for having me. And I hope you guys uh, were inspired to maybe try a seven experience of your own. All right. Well, um, catch us next Thursday.
Oh, no, no, don't catch us next Thursday. Next Thursday, there will be no Thursday Thoughts, but don't worry, you can catch us this Sunday live at 9 a.m. for worship on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we can't wait to worship virtually with you again this week. Remember, our pews might be empty, but our hearts are full, and we are so glad that we get to be in ministry with you. Have a wonderful Thursday evening.